In this presentation, we will record an advanced customer payment or down payment on the purchase of merchandise within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in the Home tab. We've got the Open Windows open. You can open the Open Windows by going to the View dropdown and Open Windows list. What we're going to do now is have an advanced payment from a customer. So what we can imagine happening is we are a store. We sell guitars. We've got a customer that says, hey, I would like this custom guitar that isn't currently in the store. We're going to have to go pick that up. We can say, yes, we can pick that up for you. However, uh, it's, it's an expensive guitar. Uh, we would like a down payment for us to go through the process. And that'll help to facilitate the process and make sure that we're going to follow through uh, with the sale. So what we want to do is collect a down payment on the guitar for which we have not uh, given yet. So re remember that there's three ways that we can have a difference between when we do the work, when we recognize revenue under an accrual basis, and when we get paid. Typically, it's one of two ways, meaning we usually get paid either after we do the work, such as like a bookkeeper or a law firm where we do work, and then we bill the client after the work and expect to get paid in the future. In that case, we, we record an accounts receivable and then get paid for it. Or it could happen at the same time, which is anything like a, a store that you would go into or a restaurant where we would typically pay at the same point in time that we get the goods or services. And then we would record that stuff at the same time, the sale at the same time as the cash received. The other way that we could have this is that we get paid before uh, we do the work. And again, that's unusual but it might happen in certain types of industries in, in certain situations, such as if we have a large purchase that we need to go and, um, and, and go to our vendor to, to get, then we may ask for a down payment before we do so. And that's one scenario. Another scenario would be that if we're in the type of company that has some kind of subscription service, like an application or a newspaper, where we are going to get paid for a year's subscription, then we will get paid before we do the work. And in that situation, we can't record revenue at the point of payment. We're going to get cash, increasing cash, increasing the checking account at some point, but we can't record revenue because we haven't earned it yet. And therefore, it needs to go into unearned revenue. So if we go into the, the balance sheet up top, or the reports, go into the company and financial, and we're going to go down to the balance sheet, and we're going to change the dates in the customized reports to 010119, 123119, and say OK. If we think about this transaction, then we're going to get cash. Now, we're not going to put it into undeposited funds. We're going to put, I mean, we're not going to put it into the checking account because we will put it into undeposited funds. But in any case, we're getting payment. And the other side is usually that we're going to give inventory or do work, meaning revenue should be the other side. But if we don't do the work yet, we're doing the work in the future, we can't credit revenue. And therefore, the other side is usually going to go to, if, we, if you think of most accounting theory classes, a liability account called undeposited funds. And how could we do that? We could do that in the system. We could do that with a journal entry, for example, go into company and go into the make journal entry. And we could then debit... Uh, debit the cash or undeposited funds and credit an account we're called unearned revenue. Now we're not going to do that here however because what we want to do is track the customer in the same subsidiary ledger as we would with accounts receivable. So if we close this back out we, we see that this subsidiary ledger usually deals this account accounts receivable usually deals with customers usually customers owing us money but also deals with the payments we get from them so if we go to the supporting document for it, it's 20540 under reports, customers and receivables, and to the customer balance detail. We can see this report then shows us the detail 20540 by customer, typical activity, invoice, payment, invoice, payment. In this case, we're going to have a payment and then an invoice, but we'd like to track it and match it out in the same area. And therefore, we could set it up in the same fashion as basically a negative receivable that we will re receive payment for later. This is something that makes it easy for us to track. However, it's not perfect accrual accounting. So it's another one of those things that 
In practice, it works to do this way. When we prefer financial statements at the end of the time period, we're going to want to make an adjustment for the, this if there's still an outstanding or negative receivable. And we'll, we'll see that when we do adjusting entries at the end uh, of the month. So we're going to go to home here. Now, no, the normal process is create an invoice and then have the receive payment. In other words, normally this receive payment only means we're getting payment for an invoice. It means that we're getting paid on account. It means that we're going to decrease accounts receivable and record an increase to some type of cash fund, in this case, usually undeposited funds. But in this case, we're going to do this first and get the payment before we do the invoice. So we select receive payments and we're going to say that it's going to be for uh, string music, selecting the drop down. We want string music. I'm going to type it in there, string music tab. We're going to receive $300 and the date's going to be the 21st. I'm just going to select the plus to get it to 221.19. It's going to be a check. I'll keep, I'll go to cash here. We're going to get cash. Now notice that the customer payment means that it's going to, it's going to um, decrease accounts receivable. That's what it, that's what the customer payment does. And it's going to put it into undeposited funds. That's all that this form does. We don't even have any other account that we can enter here. It, it decreases. Account. We could change the, the preferences here. So it doesn't go into undeposited funds, for example, but into the checking account. But this form by default simply means that we're going to uh, decrease accounts receivable and increase um, undeposited funds. And then we have no, there's no other options basically on the screen. But usually it does that by checking off an invoice and the invoice is not here this time. So we won't be uh, checking off an invoice and therefore it's going to have to decrease accounts receivable but not be able to apply it uh, to, to an invoice for this particular customer. So we're going to say save and close and see what happens. It's going to say it's going to create a credit uh, for the overpayment. So we're going to say OK. And then see what happens if we go to the balance sheet. We can see that undeposited funds should have going up here. So if we double click that, we're going to say that it went up by that 300 for string music, double clicking that. There is our customer payment. That makes sense. We haven't yet put it into the bank. It's not into the checking account yet. We're going to group them together and put it in the checking account at the same time. The other side should go into accounts receivable. So if we double click that, it went into accounts receivable, but it's a decrease in accounts receivable. And if we go through any of these, we don't see the matching invoice like we should see with a lot of these other ones, right? That's going to be the normal process there. We get, uh, we've got the, the invoice and then we're going to get a payment on the invoice in, in the future. So if I change this date back, for example, to 2018, we'll see that we have the invoice, the payment, the invoice, the payment, the invoice, the payment, invoice, payment. That should be the routine that we're going to see in the accounts receivable. This one, we've got the payment, but no invoice. So it's still, the accounts receivable still has a, a positive number. It's not like it's making it negative, but it should be 300 higher, really. And to get a better idea of that, let's go to the, to the supporting document. So, so invent, the accounts receivable is at 2,240. Let's go to reports, uh, customers and receivables, and we'll go to the customer balance detail. And it's 2,240. But then we have this one, look, they're all positive numbers and this one has a negative number in it. And that's, that shouldn't happen because it really means it's a negative receivable, meaning it's not really an asset in this, to this particular customer. We owe them $300. Really, we hope to just give them a guitar and not $300 back, but we owe them something of value of $300. So it really should be a liability. So in practice, it really helps us to put this information, this negative 300 in the customer balance detail so that when we record the related invoice, it'll match it up easily here. And we can track it all in this one form through the supporting documentation for accounts receivable. Uh, however, if we're going to make financial statements as of the, on an accrual basis, as of the end of the time period, as we will do, uh, if this is still outstanding or a negative number, we want to go through there and, and report it properly for accrual based purposes, meaning we'll do an adjustment and we'll bring this down, uh, this, this amount out, which will bring the accounts receivable up and then we'll record it to a liability account. So, so notice there's no real big change here. What's really happening is that if you think of the accounting equation, 
we've got we netted out the asset and liability for this 300 decreasing an asset instead of increasing the liability uh, and that's not exactly proper but it works logistically so that's what we will do but when we report the financial statements on an accrual basis we'll make this adjustment increasing the receivable and increasing the liability for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.